I know why you're here and you know why you're here. You want to start a YouTube channel, but in specific, you want to start a lifestyle YouTube channel. So first and foremost, I want to tell you guys that all of the information and tips and tricks I'm going to tell you, I'm going to implement on my own channel to grow and we're going to see what happens. So these are tips that are actionable and ones I'm actually putting towards my channel. You need to have two or three things, okay, to really get it going and to really know if you've got what it takes or not. Boom, okay, you need a catchy personality, valuable content, and you need good editing. But yeah, if you don't have one of the three of those or the two of the three of them, it's not looking good for you, okay? People will like your personality because it's unique to you. So you don't have to be some like audacious, like loud person, you just need to be yourself. But then also, guess what? Editing can be learned. And also what's valuable content, that's things that are searchable and that people can take something from. So like this video is searchable and it's valuable because there is information that I am giving you that you can learn from. Do not think that YouTube is a get rich quick scheme because girl, it is not, okay? <clears throat> Charlie D'Amelio is on TikTok. That's not gonna happen on YouTube. But if it does happen, like you're like a one the one percent of creators on the platform, okay? Overnight growth, overnight success really doesn't happen like that, but it can happen to you. And if it does, period, pop off. I'm so happy for you. But in reality, most creators will have to put in the work over the long term, okay? Say it with me, long term, because that's just how it is. Okay, so let's get into how you can create your channel. So let me read my notes because I don't want to miss anything. Okay, so first and foremost, come up with a clear and concise idea of what your channel is going to be about. To figure out what direction you want to go into, you need to figure out who your audience is, what kind of videos you're going to make, and why you're even starting your channel in the first place. You need to find your niche. Lifestyle at the end of the day is just your personal brand. You are your niche. Three niches that you can pick that are within the lifestyle genre, if you will. For example, you can pick vlogs, makeup, and fashion, and you can post videos surrounding those three topics, or you can pick vlogs, fitness, and cooking. Notice how I always have vlogs in there. Vlogs are important, and I know people are like, you can't grow in vlog. You can't, which is true, 100% true, but are they important to post? Yes, because guess what? People wanna see your personality. You wanna get your personality out there, because how in the long run are you gonna end up being able to vlog and people actually care about what you're even talking about? Okay, so the next part is you're gonna come up with your channel name, profile picture, banner, and your brand. So for example, I have two other YouTube channels, which is kind of psychotic of me, but whatever. And one's about volleyball. So literally the name of that channel is Jacoby Volleyball. People know exactly what it's about instantly upon reading the name of my channel. For example, this one, Jacoby Vlogs, they already know. It's gonna be a vlog lifestyle channel. Your profile picture should be clear and concise. You want your picture to be, you know, close on your face. You don't want it to be super far away where people can't see your beautiful face, right? People want to see that it's like a professional looking picture because think about it. If you're like commenting on someone's video and someone's like comes across your comment and they see that you have a nice profile picture, they're probably gonna click on it because you're like oh like cute like oh my god and then they'll probably wonder if you're creating content or not next your channel branding should be consistent from the beginning but that doesn't mean you have to obsess over it but try to have something that is consistent all the way through for example that could be your editing style that could be the color scheme that you use that could be the font you use your thumbnails blah blah blah, blah stuff like that okay let's get into equipment okay first and foremost i'm gonna preface this you don't need to buy a fancy camera blah blah but guess what i did and i just invested in my channel from the very jump just because i knew that I would stick with it long term. Now, would I suggest doing that off rip if you really don't know if you're invested? Mm, probably not, but guess what? Me buying my camera kind of made me invested. I was like, wait, bro, like I just spent like $700 on this camera. Oh, I'm gonna need to follow through with this, you know, cause I invested my money in it. I was like, no way, that's going to waste. Let's start with um your camera. So you can film on your phone. iPhones have great cameras. I sometimes film on my phone, like a little B-roll or something like that. You can also just get a standard camera like the one i'm filming on right now i'm filming on the sony zv1 or the zvi another camera i would suggest if you're into getting a camera is the canon m50 with a wide angle lens it always looks chef's kiss always looks so good next we're gonna talk about editing so editing for my little apple girlies out there um my little macbook girls right we have final cut pro which is paid we also have imovie which is free and it comes with all your apple devices use imovie when you're starting out that's what i did i used imovie until i felt like i was too limited by imovie now, if you're a PC girly little Microsoft Windows kind of gal, right, you can use Adobe Premiere Pro and I believe Movie Maker. Is Movie Maker even still alive? Now, if you want to edit on your phone, you can.
can do that. You can edit on iMovie and CapCut. I've seen people um, edit on CapCut. I edit my TikToks on CapCut, but you can also use it for your YouTube videos. And also, if you have an iPad Pro, you can edit on Final Cut on your iPad. Now, let's touch on graphic design apps. There's Canva, Bonto, PicMonkey. There's so many different ones. And basically, these graphic design apps are just used for your thumbnails, or you can just add like little overlays, just any kind of graphics you want to add to your content. Those are the apps that you can use. And they're all free, but you can upgrade and have a paid version. For example, I use the paid version of Canva because I think it's worth it and it gives me so many capabilities and options and I really like it. So copyright free music, you need to find that because even though you're not gonna be monetized, straight off the bat, you need to be using copyright free music because guess what? Once you do reach that requirement to get monetized, you can monetize all the videos you've made before you got monetized. But if you're using copyrighted music, you're not gonna be able to monetize that video. So it's important to use copyright free music and just get used to using it. Okay, I would not suggest going on YouTube and be like, copyright free music, don't do that because guess what? It can turn out to be copyrighted within like a year or a couple months, right? It's not reliable. So what I use, I use the YouTube audio library that is free 99, okay, love it so much. And I also use Epidemic Sound, which is paid. So there's a vast majority of options. There's sound effects and songs and there's different genres and vibes. Like I highly suggest investing in your music because music is very important with YouTube videos. So if you want to invest in a mic, there's two that I would really suggest. You can just use the internal mic on your camera or your phone because honestly, they're not that bad. The quality is not that bad. But if you want to up your quality, you want to invest in that. Uh, right now, I'm using the Rode Micro mic and it's like super tiny mic. It's very good good quality and it's not that expensive but it was still an investment at the end of the day but it does really enhance my audio quality and audio once again is very important if i could pick lighting or audio i would probably pick audio now speaking of lighting natural light is the best light and guess what once again it is free 99 okay like you don't have to pay for literally sunlight but once again like you might not be able to like, always catch the sun right so if you're filming at night investing in like a little light would be nice i will show you guys the one i have this light is from amazon i won't flash it in your eyes but Okay, you can find a lot of good things on Amazon, you guys. Tripods, tripods are important. Right now I'm filming on this one from Amazon. Once again, like a, literally an Amazon basics tripod has lasted me so many years. And then if you're a vlogger, okay, I have this little tripod right here. It's really sturdy. It holds a good amount of weight and it's also from Amazon, I wanna say. It's a Manfrotto, Manfrotto? Is that how you say that? But yeah. And also you can get a, um, a tripod for your phone. There's so many options for phone tripods out there. Like highly suggest. Now we're gonna get into the camera gear that you didn't know that you need, but you need and that people don't really tell you about, okay? SD cards, you need SD cards. You need backup SD cards. Another thing that you could possibly use is a phone mount. Let me show you. This phone mount is from Amazon once again. You can twist it, you can do it with your phone this way or this way, like. This thing is handy. And once again, it screws on to your tripod attachment, which is another thing you need is a tripod attachment. And it screws on, you can vlog with it, you can take pictures or thumbnails. Like I took my thumbnail with this attached and I took it on my phone. And the next thing you need is an SD card reader. Let me show you guys mine. I have a Mac, so that's why my um, SD card doesn't insert right into my computer. If it does, and if you have like, I think maybe Windows, computers do have sd ports but macs don't okay so let's get into what videos to actually make you need to figure out what do you, what videos do you watch in your free time the next question to ask yourself is what videos get you to click immediately and another question to ask yourself is how long you want your videos to be i would suggest to aim for 10 minutes but even my videos aren't 10 minutes all the time because i don't want to just like bore people you need to make a 10 minute video plus but you need to keep people engaged so let me give you a little bonus tip okay you should be posting 50 50 content you should be posting 50 percent of your videos for your current subscribers and you should be posting the other half the other 50 percent for people who are not subscribed and who have yet to find your channel and when i say videos that are geared towards your subscribers i mean videos that show your personality like vlogs get to know me's blah blah stuff like that but searchable content, that's really gonna target people who are not subscribed to you because they're gonna find you. Okay, so video ideas that target the algorithm. So these are gonna be like your popular videos that you see just pop off for people and that's what really grows their channel. So that's gonna be YouTube advice, like the one I'm doing, a productive day in my life, reset videos, cleaning videos, hauls, Apple product unboxings, what's on my iPhone slash iPad, apartment tours, room transformations, what I eat in the days, workout routines, how-to videos, and make sure you pick a topic that you're like, you're like super knowledgeable on. Tutorials, a series, advice slash tip videos. So let's get into the videos that will
will be targeting your subscribers, your current audience that you have grown over time. So these are gonna be, once again, like your vlogs, your Q and A's, a get ready with me, but you're like chit chatting or whatever, a story time, just anything that gets them to know you on a more personal level. Now, before we get into how to grow on YouTube, cause I know that's really what you wanna know, we're gonna give you a few pro tips because there's some things you need to know, okay? You need to provide value to your viewer, whether that's entertainment or information, whichever, it needs to be there. Do not post vlogs when you're just starting out. And what I mean by that is don't just post only vlogs. Like no one's searching for you. And I really hate to say that, but like no one really cares about you or what you're doing. And like, that's not mean, it's literally the truth. Like, do you really think that I think that people give too about what I'm doing day to day? Absolutely not. But will they care over time? Probably. <laughs> and another tip about making vlogs, if you're going to make a vlog like I am, I'm going to make vlogs just like every other week. Make them personal to you. And that means titling them very uniquely. Just don't title your video like a day in my life. Like that's not gonna do it, you know what I mean? So for example, what I would say is a day in my life as a 24 year old military wife or a day in my life as a 24 year old living on a military base. See how that's more specific and very personal to me? And the next thing we're talking about is being confident and delusional at the same time. I feel like to be a YouTuber, you have to be a level of delusional. Am I delusional to think that people actually care about what I'm eating for breakfast or what laundry detergent I use? Absolutely. Absolutely, but am I tuned in? Am I locked into my channel? Absolutely, so I believe in myself and I'm delusional enough to think that it will work one day. And if you have a problem like being confident on camera, literally practice makes perfect and just pretend like you're talking to a friend or someone on the phone. Like it's not that weird once you get used to it. This tip is probably the best tip I could ever give somebody and that is to look at your channel with a third party eye. Get out of your own head and look at yourself from a different point of view as if you were a different person. Because you need to be able to look at the stuff that you're making and be like, would I watch that? Would I click on that? If you're questioning like if your video is good or not, this is a surefire way to tell if it's good or not. Did you get bored during the video? Did you literally pick up your phone and be like, oh, like did you even could you even finish your video if you can't do any of those things and you thought it was boring nine times out of ten other people are gonna think it's boring okay that's just the real tape don't care about what people think people suck people will suck like they suck either way like if you're doing something completely normal or you're doing YouTube like not that YouTube is not normal but it's not the norm right so people are just gonna hate on you regardless so you might as well be just be doing what you want to do who cares like people are always just gonna be mean and also nine times out of ten people who hate on you for having a youtube channel they wish they had the confidence to even have a youtube channel at the end of the day like they're just projecting <laughs> okay now we're gonna get into part two of this video which is how to grow okay so first and foremost we have thumbnails thumbnails are so freaking important i honestly take my thumbnails before i even film the video like for this video that i'm filming right now i already have the thumbnail done it is so important because people do judge a book by its cover okay and they're gonna see your thumbnail and they're gonna be like hmm i like that click or they're gonna be like i don't like that and keep scrolling so how you can get ideas for your thumbnails and what really works once again go to like your favorite creators page or just search up what you want to post right and then look at the top ranking videos what do their thumbnails look like? What do they have in common? Do they have multiple pictures? What does the text look like? What kind of colors are popping out to you? You know, really take notes on other people, but once again, do not copy them exactly, right? Take inspiration and put your own twist on things. And sorry if the lighting switched up, my bad. The sun is, you know, doing its thing. <laughs> Another tip I have for thumbnails is to show your face in your thumbnails. People want to see who they're watching. The text on your thumbnail needs to be large and easy to read because people need to be able to see what your video is about pretty much instantly or else they will literally scroll away. And another thing I like to do is I add like little text to my thumbnails to kind of like further describe my video. Titles, y'all, titles are so important because literally, once again, that's also a first impression. Your title needs to be attractive and clickable. The more descriptive your titles are, the better. And also you wanna use searchable keywords while also making your title sounds like a human wrote it. That is so, that is so freaking important because you don't just wanna like spam your title with keywords and then have it sound unnatural. So on to optimization, say it with me, optimization. So important, you need to love it, live it, and learn it. Optimization is basically things that you can do in order for your channel to get exposure, to be pushed out to people, and for people to find you. Because as like a smaller YouTuber, it's harder for yourself to be found by other people just because you're not really getting pushed out that much by the algorithm, you're not really being searched up, 
like you're just not at that point yet where people are seeking you out so you kind of have to seek the people out at this point so there are two ways to optimize your videos you can do it through seo which is search engine optimization or you can do it through the algorithm basically the algorithm essentially helps push out your content to people they figured would like it for example if you look at your homepage on youtube you will see recommended content based on your past activity search history and interactions so they're seeing what content that you watch and basically they're just pushing you stuff that they think you will probably like which is usually pretty accurate let's be for real it's kind of creepy but it's true. So how to use the algorithm to actually get views. So the holy trinity of the algorithm is consistency, watch time, engagement. Engagement is the interactions that you get on your video. So basically like when someone likes or dislikes your video, a comment, anything like that, that is engagement on your video. So how to boost your engagement with your comments. You need to respond to all your comments and heart them and pin a comment. That's really good for your engagement, but also like you should be responding to your comments anyways, just because you should be like you should want to like you would think that you would want to respond to your comments because these people are literally taking time out of their day to comment on your video and they don't even know you another thing is, is you want to encourage people to like like your video because that also boosts your engagement so like you might want to throw in like a, oh like like my video like a little text pop-up vibe you know and people will be like oh i saw that it'll wake them up a little bit and they'll be like boop like and that's it. Next of the holy trinity of the algorithm, we have consistency. Consistency is, yes, the key to YouTube. Now, that is so much easier said than done because everyone's like, oh, like, be consistent. Like, oh, like, oh. Yeah, but it's like, how do you actually do that? So basically consistency is like what the algorithm eats for like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and snacks, and dessert, okay? Like they eat that up. So how you can stay consistent is by planning your videos ahead. So what I do is I have a content calendar on Notion. Basically, I type in all my little ideas, I'm like, do, 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 like, okay, that's a good idea, and I come up with as many video ideas as I can. Like I just brain dump. And basically, I go back through, and I just write like, like a script, if you will, and I'm just like, okay, I wanna talk about this 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 and so i don't miss anything in the video and that helps me so much because i can put it on my calendar and be like okay i want to upload this video i schedule them out i'm like okay i want to post on this this video here and so on okay you need to plan ahead it will save you so much time and mental stress so that being said the longer you are consistent the more the algorithm will like you so what i would suggest is having a posting schedule and i know people are like posting schedules are restrictive for my creativity and i'm like okay so having a deadline for yourself and holding yourself accountable is basically the way to be consistent because no one's holding you accountable for your freaking youtube channel you are the editor the producer the talent you are everything so it's hard to keep yourself consistent and accountable if you don't have a schedule and also let's like be so real right now like if your favorite youtuber literally dropped off the face of the earth would you be happy say you found some super cool channel you came across it like I do this all the time. Like I'm like just, you know, scrolling on YouTube just for leisure and I come across this cool video. I'm like, oh, that's such a sick video. Like the thumbnail's so fire. And then I see that they haven't posted in like six months. And I'm like, oh, so I don't even bother subscribing because I don't want to get attached to them because I know they're not going to come back. So I'm like, dang. I feel like people always leave out how often you should upload. And I feel like that's really also important. Minimum, you should be posting one time a week. I post one time a week and that's something I can sustain because I know that's something I can do. I can produce quality videos once we know if ands or buts about it. Okay, so let's get into watch time. You guys, watch time is how long someone is watching your video. So, Jacoby, how do you keep your viewers engaged? Your editing matters. Jump cuts, music, graphics, jokes, memes. Editing really matters and music is definitely key because it paces your video and you can like stop the music in some parts to like emphasize something you're saying. Do not skimp on your editing. And I know it's tedious and it takes time, but that's what you signed up for. Now let's get into SEO or search engine optimization. So SEO is a great way to drive slow and steady traffic to your channel. This is like how-to videos and like evergreen content essentially that will consistently get views over the years, but it's not something that will make you go viral. So here are a few ways that you can use SEO. So you can optimize your tags and your description. So first of all, you wanna use all 500 characters of your tag box, fill it up, okay? Fill it up with keywords. And what I would suggest is putting your tags in your description as well. I saw that little tip on YouTube and I was like, okay, so I'm gonna try that out and see what happens and to optimize your description you really want to write a thoughtful description like don't just not put a description mainly just because it further describes what your video is about and also it helps with your keyword optimization and that helps boost your video i notice like when i don't post a description and when i do have a description i notice a difference i really do i notice the difference in views engagement all that stuff and when you're writing your description make sure you incorporate your keywords naturally and not just like kind of like keyword stuff in like a really odd sentence for example i started my description in 
in this video with do you want to know how to start and grow a lifestyle youtube channel in 2023 in this video dot 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 like i'll put whatever you know but that didn't sound like a robot wrote it you know it sounded like i wrote it <laughs> you're probably wondering to get me how do you find good keywords i got your back tube buddy tube buddy is like a little google chrome extension that will help you optimize your videos it will help you find keywords that you should target and keywords that will help your channel grow so the two things i like to use the most on tubebuddy are the seo studio and the keyword explorer and keep in mind that tubebuddy is free they have some paid versions as well and i do think the paid versions are low-key worth it but i would start off with the free version just because you know you might not like it you never know the seo studio this tool helps you optimize your title description tags and thumbnails it gives you an overall score at the end to see how optimized your video is obviously you want to shoot for like a 100 percent that's like a fully optimized video and it also shows you how your thumbnail compares to the other top ranking videos and then second is the keyword explorer this is like Mm, chef's kiss i love it so much this tool is like my best friend you can type in any kind of like keyword you're trying to target and see what you would score for it what's a keyword keyword is a word that gives context to your video that people are likely to search for basically when you're using the keyword explorer you can kind of see your odds for like ranking if you will and the tool will show you an unweighted and weighted score you want to look at the weighted score because that means that tubebuddy took into account your channel specifically like your analytics and stuff like that and they are giving you a score for you specifically to see how well you'll do do with that keyword and they give you like a 60 out of 100 i wouldn't go for it but they give you like a, a 90 out of 100 a very like a very good or excellent score go for it because that's something that you can probably rank for and people will see your videos so let's get into some other important things that people will typically leave out of their videos so channel layout you want to customize your channel layout to make it as easy as possible for people to binge your content meaning you need to have like playlists you need to have your channel set up in like an aesthetic way next little tip is that patience is literally so key and i know people are like i don't want to be patient you have to be patient i want you to post consistently on youtube for a whole year and then you can judge yourself it's like a train it's like you're chugging along chugging along but once you stop you're stopped for a long time right but then you have to work back up again that's how it is youtube is literally just straight momentum and that being said focus on things that you can control and that means like making smart goals which is like you know basically like attainable goals like don't set yourself up for failure don't be like yeah i'm gonna get a million subscribers in one year like that can be your goal that's amazing shoot for the stars but how are you gonna do it like those are the things you need to be focusing on like how can you realistically get to a million subscribers in a year how can you realistically get to 1,000 subscribers in a year you need to post consistently you need to make your thumbnails good you need to focus on your titles you can make actionable goals like that little goals all under the big picture of gaining 1 million subscribers but that is everything I have learned about YouTube over the years YouTube takes time but guys it is so rewarding but thank you guys so much for watching I really hope you took something from this video and i helped you out um subscribe if you want to i post on sundays and i'll see y'all in my next video peace out bye